And now, on Radio Horrible History, part 26 of our epic series, The Story of a Georgian Leg End. I'm sorry, I'll read that again. The Story of a Georgian Legend. Throughout the reign of Good King George. Which one? Well, I'm not really sure. I think there might have been four of them. Call yourself a historian. Well, I'm not really a historian. I'm just an actor with a thrilling voice. I'm just reading what's written on the page in front of me. So, if you don't mind... As you were, carry on. Don't mind me. I'm just a listener. Thank you. I just pay my licence fee and your wages. Oh, throughout the reign of the good King Georges, there have been many famous villains. The infamous outlaw, Rob Roy. <laughs> the very infamous pirate, Edward Teach, or Blackbeard. Shiver me timber, large and lad, I'm a pirate. And none more totally, completely infamous than the highwayman, Dick Turpin. Stand and deliver your money or your life. Let's go back in time with our roving reporter, Roger. Roger, you're our roving reporter and you've gone back in time. What can you tell us about Dick Turpin? Thank you, boring historian in the studio. I'm Roger, the roving reporter, reporting to you from 1712. And pretty grim it is too. Although, a bag of chips is pretty cheap. I had hoped to speak to Dick Turpin in person, but unfortunately, they've just hung him. Er, hanged him. Er, hunged him. He's dead. However, I have here a lady who said she had her drawers rifled through by Mr Turpin on more than one occasion. So tell me, Miss Obadiah. That's Miss Obadiah to you. Tell me, Miss Obadiah, what was he like? Well, he was a brave and handsome hero who was wonderful on a horse. Really? Oh, yes, and he was always so polite. Always, please can I have your purse and if you'd be so good as to hand over your jewellery. And he never snatched and always said thank you, my lady. He had such lovely soft hands. Well, there's one view, although I've been chatting to some of the locals and according to them, Dick started out as part of a gang of violent housebreakers who used to rob and torture their victims until they revealed the whereabouts of their valuables. Well, he was always a gentleman to me. Always warmed his hands before he helped himself. And thank you, Mrs O. Well, I had hoped to interview some of his old friends from his early robbing days, but apparently he turned them all in in his return to freedom. And it was at this point where he launched his solo career and developed his catchphrase, which was to give pleasure to millions. Stand and deliver your money or your life. And so it's back to you, boring historian in the studio. Thank you, Roger. And that's about all the time we have for this week. Next week, we'll be going back in history and asking Adolf Hitler's mother if he really was such a naughty boy or just misunderstood. Every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you. And now, for the Radio Horrible History's charity appeal, Jonathan Swift, well-known author of Gulliver's Travels, makes an appeal for any spare babies you may have to help feed the starving Irish. Good afternoon. I've been told that a young, healthy child of a year old is a most delicious, nourishing and wholesome food, whether it's stewed, toasted, baked or boiled. I humbly suggest that 100,000 infants may be offered for sale to rich people in the kingdom. The mothers should try to make sure that they are plump and fat and good for the table. Nonsense, I'm merely highlighting a real problem that exists in Ireland through the use of my lightning satirical wit. No, I think you're missing the point. Histories for this week. Next week, we'll be bringing you. I leave that cable alone.